So the one God bless you. Well, today is Passover. And for our Jewish brothers and sisters, this day represents the feasts and seasons of the Lord, which is mentioned in Leviticus 23, verse 2. In Leviticus 22, verse 2, 23, verse 2, sorry, the same Hebrew word is used for feast and seasons. Now, you may be asking me, Pastor, why are we worrying about the Passover? We're not Jewish. You may remind me of Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, which says, Let no one judge you in food or drink, or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. However, God says in Leviticus 23, verses 1 and 2, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, The appointed feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my appointed seasons. The Passover is the first feast in the calendar of God, which reflects what God did for Israel in Exodus chapter 12. For us Christians, the Passover is a symbol of the Last Supper and also of Jesus on the cross dying as our Passover lamb. The Passover is an example of Christ's atonement for his people and deliverance of us from our sins. That is something we should celebrate every day of our lives. The events of the Last Supper are recorded in Luke 22, verses 19 and 20. Also in Matthew 26, verse 26 and 27. Also in Mark chapter 14, verses 22 and 23. And also in verse Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 25. In Luke's Gospel, it says that Jesus took the bread, and, excuse me, and he took the bread, and gave thanks and broke it, and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given unto you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise also, after the cup, likewise also, the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26 says, For I received from the Lord what I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had gave thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do it as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As far as you, as often as you eat this bread and drink of this, drink the cup, you were, were Proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Passover lamb was the animal God directed the Israelites to use as a sacrifice in Egypt on the night that God struck down the firstborn of every household. That's in Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. After that faithful night, God instructed the Israelites to observe the Passover feast as a lasting memorial. And that's in Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. God has instructed every household of the Israelite people to select a year-old male lamb without defect, which is in Exodus 12, 5, and Leviticus 22, verses 20 through 21. The head of the household was to slaughter the lamb at twilight, taking care that none of its bones were broken. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. In John 19:36, it says, For these things were done, that the scriptures should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. Psalms chapter 34, verse 20, He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Peter links Exodus 12, verse 5, with Christ in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Jesus is qualified to be the one without blemish because his life was completely free of from sin. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as are we, yet without sin. The Bible says the sacrificial blood in our hearts makes us escape the eternal death. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12 and 14 says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his 
his own blood, he entered into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of a heifer sprinkle the unclean sacrifice to the purity of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, spot to God, purge your consequence from the dead works to serve the living God. Just as the Passover's lambs applied blood in Exodus 12:23, caused the destroyer to pass over each household in Exodus 12, verses 12 through 13, Christ applying applied blood causes God's judgment to pass over sin and gives life to the believers. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Just as the the first Passover marked the Hebrews' release from Egyptian slavery, so the death of Christ marks our release from the slavery of sin. Romans 8 verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ had made us free from the law of sin and death. The first Passover lamb was a foreshadowing of the final Passover lamb, Jesus Christ. Though his sinless life and sacrificial death, Jesus became the only one capable of giving the people a way to escape death and sure hope of eternal life. He was chosen before the foundation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him so your faith and hope are in God. Now, Jesus being the Passover lamb, when he, in his last supper, when he said, the bread was his body, which is broken for us. If you've ever seen the bread that they used, it almost looks like it's prepared, like it was barbecued. I'm not exactly sure how they prepare it. But there are straps on it as if it were on a grill. And there were holes as if the bread were flipped with a barbecue fork. Now Jesus was a Passover lamb, and and he did bear stripes that were for our healing, and he was also pierced in his side. I hope this sermon has blessed you. I hope that you do realize how how the Passover should be celebrated for us, the Christians. You know, that it's not... It's actually not a Jewish holiday at all. Well, the 30, you know, 23 does say that it's a feast of the Lord. But for us, like I said, you know, for us, it, it is about Jesus and the price he paid for us. Because if Jesus didn't make himself our Passover lamb, then our faith would be useless. Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? Will you be ready to meet Jesus? Jesus really is coming soon. And you know, I've, we've all heard it. You know, all our lives that we're living in the last days. Even in the Bible, it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 28, Children, it is the last day, hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, so now many in Christ have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. And in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, saying, knowing this first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires, that they will say, where is this promise of his coming? For even since the fathers have fell asleep, all the things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. So even back then when the Bible was written, they said that we are in the last days. When though in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends, what the Lord is a, a day like a thousand years in a thousand years are like a day. We know that the last days and the last hour to God could be several hour, several years. 
In Matthew 24, verse 44, Jesus says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. And also in Matthew 24, verse 42, Jesus said, Jesus says, Watch, therefore, you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. I pray you are ready when the trumpet sounds. Do not be one of those that scoffs. Don't want to be one of those scoffers. I want you to be right with God. And if you're not right with God, I pray that you repent and that you do get right with God. Jesus could come any day. You know, I pray it's today. But no man, no man does know they are, whether it be a pre-trib, post-trib, or mid-trib rapture. We have to be ready. We have to be right with God. So we gotta pray daily. We gotta read our Bible daily. We gotta be prepared to face the last days. To be prepared from deception. You know, there's theories about the identity of the Antichrist. Whether it's someone in the government or a religious figure, or anyone else for that matter, we gotta, we gotta stick with what Second Timothy chapter 2.15 says. We've got to study to show ourselves approved unto God, be a workman that needs not to be ashamed, to rightly divide the word of truth. You know, Jesus tells us about the last days in Matthew 24. Jesus says that many will be deceived. So get your own personal relationship with God. Don't rely on someone to tell you what God says. Jesus is coming back soon, and you don't want to be one of those that are left behind. You also don't want to be one of those that suffers God with the wrath. Please, child of God, I pray that you stay in the word. I pray that you don't take my word for it or any other preacher. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, and do all good works. You can only do this by studying the word for yourself. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I pray that you read the Bible for yourself. Pray for understanding what you are reading. Pray for understanding before you read, and pray for revelation and understanding after you read. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, For we now see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know as I am known. Knowing what your Bible says will protect you from being deceived by any false doctrine. Below I have a link for the Word of Promise playlist as well as some online Bibles where you can read right off the website. There's also some programs that you can download on your computer. And if you have a smartphone or tablet in Android or iTunes, you can also download some great programs there. So please, stay in the Word. Read your Bible. Know what the Bible says for yourself. Don't rely on what someone else is telling you. Are you saved? I pray that you are. But if you're not and you realize that you need Jesus, I have a link below for the sinner's prayer with biblical references. I pray that if you are not saved, that you say the sinner's prayer, that you make Jesus the Lord of your life. And if today you accepted him, then welcome to the family. We love you. We're glad to see you. And welcome to the kingdom. I pray that you pray for each other. That you just, if someone's you know, that you just lift them up before God. And also I pray that you pray for Israel. And pray for Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You know, when we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, like it says in Psalms 122, we are praying for Jesus to come back. We're praying for the second coming. 
the Prince of Peace to come and set the eternal kingdom on this earth that will see no end. And I pray that you just remember, child of God, that I love you and Jesus loves you. God bless you and have a great day.